In this video, I'd like to take an introductory look at the tabs in the lettering object box. I'd like to place a particular emphasis on the stitching tab. The upper section of the stitching properties deals with underlay. Now the primary purpose of underlay is to attach your backing material to your work and usually a center run is sufficient for this purpose. But you'll notice you have five options. Center run, double zigzag, edge run, tatami and zigzag. And two layers of underlay can be applied in any combination to give the effect you require. As mentioned, if all you require is to secure your back into the garment, then a simple run stitch will do. If you need to apply some extra stitches to give greater thread color coverage or lay down the nap of toweling or fleece, then a zigzag or double zigzag may be required. You can change the density of the zigzag for greater coverage and add the second layer of perhaps double zigzag. If you are stitching on a rough fabric such as pico knit, Try an edge run and adjust the margin in from the edge of the column. This adjustment is to avoid the edge run underlay from being exposed on the inside of tight arcs, particularly on loose fabrics. Test each option on various types of fabric to appreciate the different effects. The next section is pull compensation. In this case, you can see the stitches are sitting on the vector letter shape. If you have stitched onto soft fabrics, example fine interlock, you'll know that columns of stitching will be narrower than you see on your digitizing screen due to the tension on the thread, pulling the garment tight. To compensate, we can apply pull compensation. You'll develop your own techniques and preferences for the fabric and type of work you do. A good starting point is to think of it like this. The firmer the fabric, the less compensation is required, and the softer the fabric, the more you would apply. Be careful though, too much may destroy your lettering and too little give you thin, scratchy looking letters. So, two things to consider when deciding on the appropriate settings are the type of fabric you are stitching on and the size of the font you are stitching. I think a good average starting point is 0.2 millimeters. Connectors. The connectors tab is used to control the machine functions between embroidered objects, that is the tie-ins, tie-offs and trims. As a line of lettering is considered to be an object, these settings apply at the end of the object or line. The tie-ins and tie-offs and trims between letters inside the object or line are created automatically for you. If the letters are more than 2 mm apart, as you can see in this case. As I move the letters closer together and decrease the distance to less than 2 mm, the machine functions automatically adjust. This is a great time saving feature. If you do wish to trim between letters, use a trim icon in the content toolbar. The tie-ins and tie-offs at the end of the objects are controlled by your selection here in the object properties. I will move the second lettering object closer than 2 mm to the end of the first and you can see the machine functions disappear. Drag away again and the functions reappear. You can also set the tie off method, either the satin method, also known as bow tie, or tatami, which places the tie offs in the line of stitches just completed.